So, John, uh, we're going to have a chance today to talk a little bit about you know, your condition and, and maybe you have some other patients around the country really hear about maybe some things that could be done for them. Sure. Could you just tell, tell me a little bit about you know, kind of your background of your pain problems and, and kind of where you got to when we, think, when we began thinking about a place in a pump? This was 23 years ago. 23 years ago. And you maybe had a, a little longer. And you'd had a back surgery injury? Is that what sort uh, of things? My L4, L5 and my SI, that's where it started. And I had uh, surgery and they replaced the L4, L5 with titanium. So you had a 360 fusion. Yes. It was a pretty big fusion. Yes. But the pain didn't go away. <sighs> For a while maybe. And then it, it got to the point, like I was saying before, I just got to the point I couldn't do it, you know, the doctor who was treating me, Dr. Bonfiglio, who referred me to you. Right. And uh, they had, uh, he had another doctor to do some shots and things in my back, which didn't, they lasted for a little bit, but they didn't work. And so I spent more time just laying in bed, looking at the ceiling, and didn't want to watch TV. Um, I was always active before. I couldn't do the things I wanted to do. So you went from a very active lifestyle to nothing. Sedentary. And I was taking a lot of oral medicines, and we had concerns with that. That was back before it is now. And More concerning now than ever, so. Yes, yeah, absolutely. exactly. And I know after a while, we, in 1996, you put in a stimulator. And success, it was good for a while. Help the nerve pain in your legs, but not your back. Exactly. And then you suggested uh, a pump in 1998. When you put it in, and you told me how it all worked and everything, you know, around the clock, the medicine, I started off with the uh, morphine pump, and it got to be where I was with the morphine pump, I was coming back once a month have it refilled because I was using so much. So, and, so your dose escalated in the pump just like it did orally with opioids. Yes. And so it, it just didn't work as well over time. So we had to change things. Yes. Yeah, and that was, that was one of the great ideas. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I don't know exactly how many pumps I have had, but I know it's probably three or four. And when we made that transition, with the fentanyl and the other two medicines that are in there, um, it's such a low dosage that you don't always feel grogged out, that you can, uh, and you don't have to come as often. Uh, I had my pump refilled last week, and I don't go back again until March. Which is, I guess, having a drug that you can get refilled every three or four months is much easier for your, your lifestyle. You yes. have to be always coming here, uh, yeah. which is, I know, very inconvenient. You live quite a ways away. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Traveling is difficult in the winter in West Virginia in the mountains. Yes. When you, when you installed the first pump and planted it, uh, my quality of life just went from zero to, what, 80, 90. You know, it was, I could do things. And everybody who sees me, you know, uh, they're actually surprised that I have a pain pump. I still have off days, but for the majority of it, it has been nothing but a lifesaver for me. So if, if you were a patient today uh, in 2016 and you were, had this big cage fusion, you weren't doing well, um, you know, what would be your thoughts? Do you have any thoughts for anybody that's out there today with, that's suffering, laying, looking at the ceiling? What's your thoughts on, on, on the way you would approach things today differently or the same, or what would you do? I haven't given up on me. That, I that's... still try to be, uh, even on my off days, I still try to be as active as possible. I've had, I've had a pump since 1998, and they don't last forever. They have to be changed out. And so if anybody out there, no matter what age you are, don't give up. 
because this man right here and his staff have kept me to where I'm at today. Well, you know, you're, you've been a very quiet person, and I've always told you I thought you'd be a good role model for others because you've kept fighting. You've kept active. And I've told you that for years, and now you yeah. have a chance to be a role model for others around the country.